Good evening and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everybody. God is a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a mighty God. I'm a little techno weary tonight, trying to get everything together. I'm praying that we can have the YouTube thing up by Sunday. I will let you know if we do, and I will show you how to. I'll give you all the information you need to get in. Um, we're going to continue. What God has blessed, no one can curse, part three. And um, we just thank God for all of you that have been watching, taking notes, asking questions. We thank God for all of you. So we're asking you to continue to keep DJ and I in your prayers, that we continue to do what God wants us to do. And like I said, tonight I'm techno tired. My brain is weary trying to transfer stuff and add stuff and stuff. So y'all pray for me. Amen. DJ is the techno one. I'm, I'm just kind of blinking my eyes sometimes and stuff. But God is a good God and he's making a way. Uh, we're going to pray. We're going to go into some music. I bless you, Minister Rev. Amen. Praise God. It's good sometimes to talk to people and just have a laugh. Because we can laugh about certain things. Amen. And we just thank God for all of you that are joining in and those that will get this later on. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And y'all, stop believing these folk that tell you that Jesus, when he rose, he got rid of the Sabbath. Y'all, come on. It, it was given in the garden. It was not just given with Moses. It was given way before Moses. God wanted us to have a day that was dedicated to him. And it was day seven, not day not day eight, not day one. It was day seven. You can say every day can be a Sabbath all you want. But he sanctified the seventh day. People talk about Saturday. Saturday is, is the worship of Saturn. We understand that. We've been calling it Saturday since we were born. Amen. But that's not who we worship. The Bible declares that the Sabbath day. Amen. He called it. That's the only day that I can find in the Bible that Jesus actually named. He called it the Sabbath. Amen. So we do respect and keep the Sabbath from Friday night sundown to Saturday sundown. And some of y'all know that sundown is getting later and later. Bless God. So we're asking you to continue to be obedient to the Lord and just ask him what it is to get you closer. God bless you, Sister Lynn. We're going to pray and we're going to listen to some music and then we're going into the word of God. We're going back into the book of Numbers, but I'm going to be giving you some scripture and I want you to have a way to take down the scripture so you can go over it for yourself. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. We ask you now to forgive us for our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, cleanse us from all blood guiltiness. Lord, give us clean hearts and renew a right spirit on the inside of us. Anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our minds to understand. Anoint our eyes to see clearly and to speak the truth. And Lord God, in our hearts, let us receive you gladly. And Father, we ask that you be pleased with us in whatever we do. Order our steps, direct our paths so that we don't wind up in the land of error under strong delusion. So God, we ask that you keep us alert and keep us focused on your word, that nothing that people do is going to change how we worship you and love you and honor and respect you. And we give you glory. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, O God, and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' blessed name. For the rest of my life, I'm going to give the Lord some praise. Bless the name of Jesus. Yeah.
23, Numbers 23, 11 and 12. scripture to cover. Um, we were we were talking about decontamination as far as the church is concerned, but we're also talking about decontaminating ourselves from toxic relationships, whether it's friendships, business ships, church ships, ministerships, ships, whatever ship you're in. Amen. If it's toxic to your soul, it, it, it becomes a contaminant. And then whoever you're around, you're going to contaminate them. Bible declares that people were going around searching for souls that were still weak, still babes, and made them twice the children of hell as they were. This is what scripture say. I didn't make that up. So we're, 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 we're going to look, because we're leading to Pentecost. Pentecost is coming. A lot of preachers are going to be preaching about Acts 2 and 4, and the, and the wind came in, and, and, and I keep saying to folks, if we would read what the word actually says, we wouldn't be making so many mistakes. The Bible says it was like there was a sound that sounded like a mighty Russian wind. It was not wind. It was a sound. This is what the Bible says. The folks, oh, the wind came in and it was blowing it. And we got all of these things and all of these false teachings. And folks don't want to admit to the fact we taught wrong. We, 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 we taught what we were taught. But once we learn the truth, we decontaminate ourselves from the things of old, especially the old fables and the old so-called doctrines, and we recognize, Lord, we have to follow the apostles' doctrine. I'm not talking about a church now. The apostles' doctrine, because that's what Jesus gave them to teach us, and that's what we're supposed to teach others. So we're not supposed to be compromisers of the world or with the world, which makes a lot of people upset. Praise God. But I've learned something in, in this life coming up that you can't lose a friend that you never had. A friend is going to be a friend. They may not always agree with what you do, and they may get highly upset with you from time to time, but a friend is still going to be there. Friends are still going to have your back. So you can't lose a friend that has never really been a friend. We have messed up by saying people were friends when they were just close acquaintances, but they really weren't friends. Praise God. So we have to be very careful even to what we claim and what we do. Um, we left off with Yahweh declaring or God declaring that he's, he's not a man-made God. He is the only true and living God. And then we read Isaiah 44 and 6. Isaiah 44 and 6, King James Version tonight. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first. And I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. It, it, it's really nice to see here that in Revelation, Jesus says the same thing. And it shows you when he says, I and my father are one. They are one in unity. They are one. We went through this about the Lord God spoke it and Jesus brought it to pass because he's the word of God. So he took the word and put the word in flesh and 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 what they say, um, 
it, it got into the egg of a woman and then it became flesh. This is what all that was. And, and this is how he became the son of God. He was the word of God first, and then he became the son of God. So people say that Jesus was created. No, the body that he was in was made and prepared for him. But Jesus has already always been the word of God. As long as God had a word, that was Jesus. Amen. And so he tells him, I'm the first and I'm the last. And besides me, there is no God. Now let's look at Isaiah 45 and 18. Isaiah 45 and 18. This is what the Lord said. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabitant. I am the Lord and there is none else. This earth that we're on right now, this is where it's supposed to be. Folk keep trying to go to other planets. That's their business, but this is where we're supposed to be. He created the earth to be inhabited by us. This was he, why he created Adam and Eve. He made this planet for us. He's done some stuff to it, but he made it for us. And when he made it, it was perfect in its creation until it got contaminated. So now if King Balaam would have known that the, that the one true God had already, like I said, made him a promise, he wouldn't have even bothered Balaam to try to bribe God to curse Israel because he would have known that in his lineage, he was already blessed. Balak was already blessed because he was the Moabite and they came out a lot and Lot was blessed because of Abraham. So not knowing, this is why it's so important when we were talking about the names of God and, and to understand the names is to understand his character. So when we understand the character of God, we know how we can pray. Um, today, today, it was a long day. Today, I was dealing with technology. And those of you that know me know that's not, that's, that's not my calling. Amen. And, and trying to listen to somebody that I can't understand exactly the language because of the, the dialect. And, and, and then at the end of the whole situation, they asked the question. They said, can I help you with anything else? And in my mind, I'm saying, you ain't helped me with what I needed help with in the first place. But no, I'm good. And I had to hang up because after a while, your head just starts spinning because you can't understand what's being said. And then folks is telling, okay, that's okay. No, do this. And no, what does it say here? And I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'd rather deal with, let DJ deal with it. Amen. Praise God. Then I ask her and then I get annoyed with her too. And then she get annoyed with me. And then we just finally fix it. Praise God. But it, when, when you're dealing with stuff that you're trying to get right from ministry, it's like every, things have changed so much that, that this has to be done. That has to be done. Got to make sure that data is right and that data. And you got to make sure there's no third party and they not getting in your business. And when you got third parties in, involved in stuff, it makes a mess a lot of times, especially if you don't speak the same language. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's the same way that when you have a relationship with, you have a personal relationship with a personal God, when you bring in a third party that doesn't know the personal God, that doesn't have a relationship with the personal God, that's going to become a, a, a technical headache to you because you're trying to go in one direction and they're trying to go in another direction. You have a ministry, you're trying to go in another, one direction, but you got folks in the ministry that sow discord that, that now you have a division. And while you're trying to pull the people into the presence of God, other folks is trying to go around that and get in another way. And that's when you say, you know what, God, let them have it. Let them have it. And when you're ready for us to do this thing, you'll put people together that have a like mind, that have the like spirit. It's easy to deal with people that have a focus on God. And Balaam, he, he wasn't saved. Balaam wasn't even an Israelite. He was a prophet. He had a gift. And we learn from Balaam that you can be gifted, you can be used of God, and you can still be a heathen. Hey, listen, I didn't make this up. And, and, and so there are a lot of things that we learn about people in pulpits, people in ministries. We can be used by God. And God will move 
and God will deliver and God will make people free and lives will change. Folks will get saved. Praise God. Even some folks will be filled with the Holy Ghost. But then when God gets finished using this vessel, if this vessel is not right, he's going to discard this vessel and cast it into the fire. So we don't want just to be people that, oh, God used me. Oh, God, didn't God use me? Didn't God use me? Yeah, well, yeah, he used you, but 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 do you know him? Amen. Just because he, he uses you doesn't mean that you have a personal relationship with him. Those that stood before the Lord and said, Lord, Lord, Adonai, Adonai, didn't we cast out demons in your name? We did all these great things in your name. And then the Lord said, yeah, but I never knew you. I, I used you because you had a desire to be used, but you didn't want to live right. You didn't, you had iniquity in your heart. You were doing things for fame and fortune and money. And so I let you have your way. At the same token, I used you because you had a gift to begin to draw the people. And as long as you have a gift to draw the people, I'm going to use you. But if you don't want to know me, then I'm going to cast you out. I don't care if you cast out demons. I don't care if 15,000 people got saved under your ministry. If you don't have a relationship with me, I never knew you. I never had an intimate conversation with you a one-on-one. -on -one. This was Balaam's problem. Balaam thought that, well, Balak is going to give me all this money. Listen, I'm going to do what he wants me to do. But he had sense enough to know, listen, whatever this Lord tells me, this God of Israel tells me, I'm going to give you exactly what he tells me. Watch this. As corrupt as Balaam was, he was a mess. As corrupt as he was, he had sense enough to know, I'm not going to lie on God. He's better than a whole lot of false prophets today. He said, I'm not going to lie on God. Whatever Balak, whatever he tells me, this is what I'm going to tell you. You may not like it, and I may be disappointed because you offered me some good stuff, but I'm not going to lie on God. I'm not going to make up a prophecy just so you can give me some money. Help us, Holy Ghost. Why? God cannot be bribed. The devil would turn all of our blessings from God into curses if he could. That's what he would love to do. Every gift, every talent, every calling that you have on your life, the devil would love to flip that thing around and use it for his own glory, but he can't do it. Because if you have a personal relationship with a personal God, no matter what happens, you cannot be cursed. You're blessed and can't nobody change that. Nobody can unbless you but you. If you get to a point where you get fed up, I don't want to wait on God no more. I'm tired of listening to God. I'm going to do my own thing. You still got free will. If you walk out from underneath his covenant, then you walk out from underneath his blessing. So whatever happens to you, whatever hellhounds start biting at you and chewing on you, you can't get mad at God about it. Lord, why did you let? No, you came outside of the ark of safety. We have to stay in covenant with God. We are a covenant people. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. We so easy to break covenants. We we have to learn when God makes a covenant. This is this is a spiritual agreement, an everlasting agreement that He's made with the church, that He's made with the body of Christ, that He's made with His bride. But the bride ain't ready. There's there's still division. There's still gossip. There's there's still fault finding and ping, finger pointing. There, there's still lying. There's still manipulation. There's still people making up prophecies and saying, God said this and God said that. And for $100, I'm going to give you a word. For $500, I'm going to give you a better word. And we got all of these things going. We got denomination against denomination. We got color against color. People call it racism. I call it colorism. Praise God. And all of these things are happening. And it's all inside the church. And Satan sits back. And he knows he ain't got to do much. All he got to do is whisper a word in two or three that are open to him and it will cause discord all among the people in the church. And this is why we got so many denominations claiming to be under the same God in the same covenant, but yet we can't get along. And this is what the enemy uses against us to keep us divided because he knows within himself that if the people of God that are called by God's name would humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then God is going to hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and he's going to bring a healing to the land. But as long as we stay, stay separate, that is not going to happen. And according to Revelation, it's not going to happen until Jesus comes. So we know that, that, that since the devil can't bind us up, he can't curse us, he's a little frustrated with us, a whole lot so, praise God. 
And, and this is why you go through trial. This is why you go through tribulation. This is why you get attacked. Because you are cursed. You, you, you are not cursed. The devil is alive. You're not cursed. Because you are blessed. And Satan wants his best to make you think that God has forsaken you. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'm, never, I'm not going no place. I'm always going to be with you. You may not always feel me. You may not always hear me because you're not listening. You're so busy looking at, at, at the things that are going on around you. And, and look who got what and who driving this and who got this and who got the biggest church and how many people this. You're looking at the wrong thing instead of putting your focus on me. And how can I be more anointed? How can I get closer to God? How can I be filled with the spirit to a point where I'm in an overflow of whoever I'm around? That river of living water comes alive on the inside of me and it begins to contaminate those that are around with the Holy Spirit. It becomes, I become one of those, those people that can be um, effectuous. Yeah, I'm going to call, I'm going to cause you to be affected, infected with the Holy Ghost, infected with faith, infected with truth and honor. This is, this is what we're supposed to be as the light of the world and, and, and the salt of the earth. This is what we're supposed to be. Amen. But 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 Balaam, he he wasn't that kind of dude, and Balak didn't know his his blessing. It, when 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 God has blessed you and you don't know the blessing, you can't walk in the blessing. If you don't read the will, which is the testament, old and new, and, and you can't you don't read the will, you won't know what your heritage. What is your inheritance? Everybody talking about, oh, we're going to go to heaven. It's going to be a great time. And we're going to live in heaven forever. You're not going to live in heaven forever. That's not even scriptural. We are made for this planet. We're going to get a new earth. That's where we're going to be. Wherever Jesus is, yeah, heaven is there. But he's going to make a new heaven. And that's not for us. So we, we teach things. And we preach things. And we get a rise out of the people. But we're teaching them wrong. And they're not paying attention. Heaven is not made for you. There's a paradise. That 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 that's waiting until all of this is 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 done away with, and we get the new heaven, and we get the new earth, and then the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. This city is so big it takes up states. If we would look at it, that's how big the city is. God is going to do that great thing, but in the meantime, we have to learn our heritage. God, what have you promised me? As a part of Abraham, because I'm blessed with faithful Abraham, this is what the word of God says. So as part of Abraham's family, what am I entitled to on this planet? Sometimes we ask God for stuff that's not in his will for us to have. It is, it's, it's like, Lord, I want this and that. But God has said, that's not part of your heritage. I promised Israel, the, the nation is Israel certain things. That part is not your heritage. But then there are other things on, that were promised to Israel. All that is part of who you are. But you just got to know what's yours and what's not yours. First, and then when you ask God, don't ask with iniquity. And don't ask like God owed you a favor. Because honest for God, when I ask the Lord for stuff, I say, God, I'm asking you for this. I know I don't deserve it because I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I know I don't deserve it. But because you died for me with my undeserving self and because you love me with my undeserving self, I can ask you and long as it, it lines up with the word of God and I can ask you for this, you said you would give it to me. Now, if it's not in your will for me to have, I'm not going to fall on the floor and have a, have, a, have a hissy fit. Praise God. I'm going to say, okay, so God, if I can't have that, then there's a reason you won't let me have it. I don't know what it is, but it's okay. Because if I get it and I'm not supposed to have it, it's going to become a problem. And if it becomes a problem, it's going to contaminate me and make me toxic. And I don't want to be contaminated. I want to be decontaminated. So I need to know exactly what it is that you want for my life. What you want for everybody else? To God be the glory. But what do you want from me? Because when I stand before you, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear, I never knew you. Depart from me. I want to hear well done. Praise God. This is this is what we need to want to do. But Bella didn't know. Bella was doing his own thing. Bella had, had gotten to a point where he was supposed to be cursing the people, but God had shown him some things. And Balaam's response was, he said, well, shucks, I want to die with the righteous. I want to have a righteous, <laughs> help me, Jesus. I want to have a righteous burial. I want to die with the righteous. But he still wasn't living right. Praise the name of Jesus. So 
Balaam decided to die like the death of the righteous, like Israel. But later on in his life, we see that he gets slain in battle, which is sad. Um, there's a lot of people that envy the righteous, but they don't want to be righteous. They want what righteous, they want the peace. They want the joy. They, they want the assurance, the assurance that they really don't understand, but they want it. They, they want to know why we can be so happy and content when this world is just going wild and, 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 and things are happening when we get persecuted by one another. Praise God. And, and, and they, they don't understand why we can still smile, why we can still praise and pray. It's because of whose we are and because who we know. And, and when you have that personal relationship with the personal God, you know that he is the Elohim. You know that he is the Yahweh. You know that he is Mekadesh. You know that he's the one that will sanctify and purify you, that he is the living God, the El Shay. You know all of this because this is what you've learned. And when you pray, you're praying with all of this in mind. I know who I'm going before. Balaam had no idea. Balak had no idea what he was asking Balaam to do. And Balaam had no idea that he was going to have an encounter with a personal God. Praise God. So now let's go to Numbers 23 and 11. Many people want God's favor and they want God's blessing, but they don't want a personal relationship with him because God demands holiness. We can't be holy without him. We can't be in right standing, which is righteousness. We can't do that without him. So we need him. And people don't want to need Jesus. They want to go past Jesus and just get to God. And you can't do it. It's, I don't care what celebrity says. You can go another way. Leave that alone. Jesus is the only way. He's the only door. And if we try to go any other way, we're thieves and robbers. The numbers, 23, 11, and 12. I'm in the King James Version tonight. Then Balak said to Balaam, what, what have you done to me? What you done? He said, I, I, I took you to curse my enemies. And look, you have blessed them bountifully. So he answered and said, must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? Good God, have mercy, Jesus. Balaam was totally disturbed about ba Balaam's uh, prophecy. Balaam was really upset about that word because he paid good money. And, 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 and he, he felt like this. I done pay, I done, first of all, I sent for you. That was money. And then you told me to get, get seven altars and and, and put seven sacrifices on all of these altars. And I did all of this. And then you come, that, you come back to me and you bless these people even more than they were blessed before. He said, dude, you, you're doing me wrong. You're doing me wrong. But Balak was in fear. He Fear driving him now. He's so upset. Moab is upset. They're terrified that Israel is going to take them over. If they would have known, like I said, their inheritance, they would have recognized that Israel wasn't going to touch Moab. That was not what God had told them to do. God even said, I'm not going to give you their property, so don't have no conversation with them. Don't go to war with them. I'm not giving you what I've already promised them, and I promised them through Abraham. You go and do what I told you to do. So they, he, he didn't know it. So prophet was upset, um, and, and, and he was a little upset that he couldn't please Balaam, but because the money was good. But let's see what happens in verses 13 through 17. It says, Then Balak said to him, Please, come with me to another place. And I'm laughing because if the, if the first seven altars that you put on seven different hills didn't work, and them seven, them seven sacrifices didn't work the first time, you're going to try to bribe God the second time and, and, and I hope that he changes his mind because you're just going to move the, the sacrifices to seven different hills. You, you're going in a different place. Maybe we were in the wrong spot for you to ask God what you asked God. And that's why he kept blessing is because you weren't in the right place. Praise God. So, so, so we, 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 
we see that Balak is so frustrated, he's not leaving Balaam alone. He said, listen, we're going to go to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only the outer part of them and shall not see them all. Curse them for me from there. So he brought him to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars. Here we go again. This is 14 now. Seven altars and, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. And he said to Balak, stand here. This is Balaam talking. This is the prophet Balaam. Stand here by your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balaam. See, see, you keep on messing with God, you're going to have an encounter with God. Maybe for your good, maybe for your bad, but you're going to have an encounter. He says, then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, go back to Balak and thus shall you speak. God will use a vessel that's willing, even though the vessel is not saved. This is why you have so many preachers that can preach, and I mean can preach and teach, but have no relationship with a personal God because they think all they got to do is, is excite the crowd, get the money, the people are happy, they're building the churches, we got the fine cars, and everything is cool, I'm wearing fine clothes, all of my vestments are done because of what I do, and God said, I don't even know who you are, but I'm going to use you. Said, but if God don't know, I'm how to use it. He doesn't know them in a personal way. He knows them in the sense that he, he they created, they're human. He, he knew them before they were even formed in the, in the wombs of their mother, but he does not have a personal relationship. You can preach a house of fire. I know some preachers that you sit down and you're like, oh my goodness, that person can preach, but then they're not saved. They're not saved. They don't understand the concept of salvation. They don't understand holiness. They don't understand walking in holiness. They don't understand what holiness is. Holiness is not what you wear. Holiness is not the color of your hair. Holiness is not the color of your skin. Holiness is not how many people you got in your church. Holiness is a way of life. It's a clean life. It's coming out from among that which will contaminate you, which is the world, and to be separate and making yourself, your body, your whole self, a living sacrifice unto the holy God so that that's just your reasonable service according to what Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2. He said, this is just your reasonable servant. This way you'll know what the good, acceptable, perfect will of God is concerning you. You can't do this if you don't know how to put yourself on the altar and say, God, here I am. Balaam had a knowledge of God, but he didn't have a personal relationship with God. There are a lot of preachers that know God book-wise, and they know God as far as what they've been taught, but they don't know God in a personal way where it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So when they send that conviction is so deep on the inside of them, they go to the Lord and repent quickly like David did because David had a one-on-one -on -one with God. He had a personal relationship, even though Moses got to God to a point where God wanted to kill Moses at one time. Y'all need to read that story again. And and and, and it, it, the grace of God, the poor do what to do, bless the name of Jesus. But God was upset with him. First of all, he's going to tell God telling him what to do, and he's telling God what he can't do. And God said, I made the mouth. You're going to try to tell me you, you don't know how to speak. I'm the one who, who made the mouth. I am that I am. You got to know who I am. And he had to teach Moses. Aaron did a lot of talking in the beginning, but if you continue to read the story, you'll find out when Aaron got quiet, that's when Moses started talking because God showed Moses exactly who he was. He said, I'm in, in, in Pharaoh's eyes, you're going to be a God in Pharaoh's eyes because he ain't going to never see nothing like what I'm getting ready to do in you. But then there's a situation where God will use people and he will use them for his glory and they'll still be lost. That's the sad thing. That's the thing that should break every born again baptized believer that has a relationship with God. That should break your heart every time you think about it. Hear people preaching. I mean, sweating preachers dressed down and, and people following and screaming and falling out. Some people getting saved. Some people getting delivered. But them, themselves, they do not know the personal God. They, they compromise with the world. You cannot compromise with the world and walk in holiness. The Bible says if we're going to be a friend with the world, then by default, we become enemies of God. Now, I can have a lot of enemies, but I don't want God as one of them. 
Amen. When God is, when you become an enemy of God, anything can happen to you. Anything can happen in your life, in your children's life. Things that you love so much can be taken from you. There's so many things that can happen because you become an enemy of God. So we got to know who he is. So Balaam went to the Lord and the Lord said, okay, he keep coming to me. And Balaam want to know what, what time it is, if you will. He says, go back. And this is what I want you to tell Balaam. He says, so he came to him, Balaam, and there he was standing by his burnt offering. Balaam, Balaam was standing there with the offering, and the princes of Moab were with him once again. And Balaam said to him, what has the Lord spoken? Sometimes if you are in the wrong, you may not want to ask a, a, a prophet whether they're true or not. You may not want to ask them. What has the Lord said? Amen. Balak still didn't get it. Whether you can physically see a child of God or not, once they are blessed, the blessing is set. Balaam had in his mind, if I can show them him less of Israel, maybe because he seen that Israel so big, that's why he blessed them and blessed them again. So, so maybe if I just show him a little bit of them, you know, that'll change God's mind. Oh, Lord Jesus. Bella thought, you know, it'll be better. We take him to another place. He see a smaller portion. So now for the second prophecy, we're going to see what's going to happen. He wanted Israel cursed so bad, he built another seven altars. Now, this is 14 altars that he's already built so that God would hear Balaam, so that Balaam can come back and curse the people of God. As long as Israel was walking up right before God. Now, this is the new generation, that old generation that didn't believe God, they, they done died off. These folks have been walking right thus far in, in the sight of God and they're doing right before God. And God not going to curse folks that, why am I going to let you curse the people that are obeying me? That doesn't even make sense. So people that say to you, this person's got a curse on you or that person's putting santeria on you or that person's working witchcraft or voodoo on you or hoodoo on you. That person got you um, I can't think of them things that they call, they, they put them in the, in the, one of y'all help me out. They put them in the, like a voodoo doll. They, they get these little things and they put them together. They stick pins in them and carry on. They say, this is why you sick and this is why you got pain because somebody's working witchcraft on you. This is why you cussing and swearing and acting a fool because somebody's working witchcraft on you. If you are a child of God, that's not going to happen. Now, if you are one of those that speaking and teaching and preaching, but you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, then yeah, you might be, you, you might be rooted up. They, they, you might be voodooed up because you have no protection. But for the child of God, there is no witch, no sorcerer, no warlock, no, no, no witchcraft, no tea leaves, no palm readers, no, no astrology readers, no horoscope. Y'all leave them horoscopes alone. And the church folk fooling with horoscopes and stuff. Stop the, the zodiac signs and all this foolishness. You wasn't born under no sign of no bull. You wasn't born in, in, in the sign of, of, a, of, a, of a lion, praise God. You were supposed to be born under the sign of the cross, under the sign of the blood. Stop with this stuff. This is the world. You get you reading the horoscope. People tell you can't wear arms today because it's gonna be bad luck. So you wearing everything but arms. Come on now. Stop listening to that. We'll listen to what somebody's saying more than we will listen to what God has already written and proven to be true. Let's focus on what God has told us. And 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 and, and God is not going to allow his people to go but through but so much. Anything that you're going through right now, you can handle it. Trust me, you can handle it. Because because the Lord is never going to put on you more than you can bear. It may feel like you can't take anything else. Y'all stop saying, God, I can't take no more because that don't work. Just stop. And, 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 and we say, you know, God, whatever it is and why ever I'm going through this, you know what? I'm still going to praise your name because you know the way that I take. And whatever's going on, it's going to be a blessing in the end. And I thank you for it. And when we start acting like that and, and speaking like that, it frustrates the devil to no avail. And every demon and devil that follows Satan, praise God, it frustrates them because they can't read your mind. They can only hear what you say. And when you begin to praise God, regardless of situation and circumstance, 
it he don't know what to do with himself. Bless God. And and, and so 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 we have to learn from Balaam, even though he was corrupt, he wasn't gonna lie on God. He had that much sense. And he wasn't gonna do it just for the money or to make Moab and Balak happy. Verses 18 through 24. It says, then he took up his oracle, which is the word of God, and said, rise up, Balak. This is what God told Balaam to say to the king, Balak. And he said, and hear, listen to me, son of Zippor. Called him all his government. God is not a man. Oh, I love this scripture. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Has he said? And will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command. Oh my God, that thing sent a chill through me. Balaam, who don't know God, who's not an Israelite. He's got a gift of prophecy and he kept fooling up and God then got hold of the brother and got hold of his mouth. And he says, listen to what he's saying. He says, behold, look, Balaam, I have received a command to bless. I can't do nothing else. I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Balaam got more sense than a lot of false prophets today. They keep playing with God. They're going to keep playing with God until, until God has had enough. And then their whole world is going to be turned upside down. You just watch. Amen. But, but he, he, he said, Balaam said, I've got a command to bless. He, God, Elohim has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Can't do it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob. Then there's no reason. Nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God. See, he's not saying the Lord my God. He said the Lord his God is with him. I can't turn this thing around. He said, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox, for there is no sorcery against Jacob. That just, that just messed Balaam all up. Nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. Look, a people rises like a lioness and lifts up itself like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. This, 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 this sure, this, this, this should bring an assurance to every child of God that's going through anything. Praise God that there's no weapon that's formed against us that can prosper. The weapons will be formed. And sometimes it seems like we get hit every now and then, but they're not going to destroy us. Bless God. But, but, but there's an Elohim. God is not a man. Praise God. He, he, he doesn't accept bribes. He's not impressed by fame and, and fortune. Praise the name of Jesus. God's got a way of taking the prideful and stripping them down. What they used to have and how great it used to be for us is no longer that way. God's got a way, glory to God, to get our attention. Praise God, to let us know you got too big for yourself. So now let me cut you back down to size. Remember what he did to Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. You're getting too big. You're boasting too much. You're bragging. You got braggadocious in your blood. So let me chop you down. I'm not going to take you totally out of ministry, but I'm going to take you and put you somewhere for a little while to let you see where you can fall and then how I can bring you up. But I'm not going to bring you up until you acknowledge that I am the living God. This is what he said to Nebuchadnezzar for seven years. Nebuchadnezzar ate grass like a wild animal till his hair had, had fallen down and looked like feathers. They, they didn't know who he was. He didn't know who he was, but something clicked on the inside of him. A moment of sanity where he acknowledged God is the living God. He's the El Shea. He is the living God. There's, I don't have nothing without him. When he decided to say that, God restored him and gave him his kingdom, and that was it. Bless God. And, and, and he said, whatever God is going to do, he, his, his word is established. Balaam told Balak, he said, listen, I can't reverse this. I, this is a God that's not like any of them demon gods that I've been dealing with. This is God. 
I can't change this. I have a command. That command is in my mouth. And whatever he tells me to say, I have to say it. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. This is you hear me say a lot. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven and returneth not there, but waters the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so shall my word be that comes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, empty-handed or unaccomplished, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God has all strength and has power to perform whatever he promised. Whatever God promised you is coming to pass. He's going to make it good. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Amplified Bible, same, same verse, says it like this. For as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered yes. So through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. So if we live our lives walking in holiness and obeying God's word, nobody and nothing can put a curse on us at all because all the promises of God are in Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus, they are yes. And then we say, amen. That's how that works. Glory to God. Somebody say, I don't have to go back and get that again. Go back and get it again. All Balaam was to do was report. All Balaam could do was report what God had already told him to say. God has blessed Israel and no amount of money that Balaam would give Balaam could change that fact. What nothing he could do about it. In their present season, Israel was walking with God and no wickedness, no iniquity was found in them. This is a new generation. Amen. So no curse was going to affect them. Praise God. It, 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 it's like this too. Folk be your friend getting mad at you and then get five, six people together and pray against you like a little witch's cauldron because they don't like you no more. And, and they, they want you to fail. You, you'd be surprised how many people that say they're saved that, that, that just look at you and want you to fail. They will smile at you and say, you know, I'm praying for you for real. I really am. But on the inside, there's an envy, there's a jealousy, and there's a bitterness and even sometimes a hatred because they can't make you fall. No matter what they do or what they have done, they can't make you fall. They can't make you give up on ministry. They can't make you give up on God. They can't make you give up on your faith. You can't, they're not going to get you to, to, to go against holiness. They just not going to do it. They, they, they will try everything they can to manipulate people, to make them come against you, to walk away from you. But it's all good, praise God, because you can't lose what you never had. Bless the name of Jesus. And, 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 it, and it, it, it gets under their skin when they even see you or, or somebody mention your name. It, it, it makes them upset because they want you to fail. Misery likes company. And when people are not happy within themselves, they don't want you to be happy at all. Bless God. If I can tell you how many people want me to fail, it just cause you to raise an eyebrow. Praise the name of Jesus. Today, every born again child of God can quote Romans 8 and 31. I know y'all thought I was going to 28. 8 and 31. I'm using New King James. It says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Good Lord, have mercy. If God is for you, who? Balaam had a gift. He was a prophet. We don't know. Don't tell us how he got to, you know, how he got to give. Or if people just started doing and calling him prophet, we don't know how he got the name prophet, but we do know that he had a gift. And, and like I said, God will give gifts and he will give callings. You know why? Because gifts and callings come without repentance. You can be gifted and you can be called, but then you, you, you have to say to God, I want to do this thing right. Or you can take your gift as a seer and, and give it to the devil and get money for telling people their fortune. 
You can tell people what's going to happen because demons know the people, the familiar spirits. They gain familiar spirits. And yes, they know that you broke up. And yes, they know what he did and what she did because they helped them do it. These are the things that they do. And people are like, oh, this is a real prophet. This is a real woman of God. This is a real man. And, and you sitting there looking at them like you just don't even, you can't see the handwriting on the wall and it's right in front of your face. And, and, and if you got a magnifying glass and you still can't see the writing on the wall that this is not God. Everybody that's jumping and hollering and flipping and walking pews and swinging from chandeliers don't mean that they're anointed. Come on now. Praise God. When we get to a point when the anointing of God is in the place, remember we talked about it? It's the, the, the glory of God. The weight of God. Glory falls into a church. Something happens in that church. People begin to feel the presence of the Lord. They fall on their knees. They go to the altar. They sit in the chairs and lift their hands and surrender and give up to God. You can do the benediction and folks still give the Lord the praise because nobody wants to get out from underneath the glory of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is where we need to get back to. Getting back to, we, we talk about Pentecost. I, if the Lord spare our lives. To see Pentecost, I want to. I want to fall. I want to be in a presence. I don't know if we're gonna be in the building or not on that day. I'm. I'm talking to God about that, but it, it, it's. I, we still go live either way. But I want the people to feel the anointing and the presence of the glory of God. And say, God ain't gonna give His glory to nobody. We're not talking about God giving His glory to somebody. We're talking about God blessing us. To, to feel his presence, which is his glory, that he will allow us to feel, and we fall under the weight of his glory. People confess their sins under the weight of God's glory. Under the weight of God's glory, people can be healed without anybody laying hands on them. Bless God. Under the weight of God's glory, folks can begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, not as they feel some emotion and some jibber-jabber out of their mouth that they heard somebody else say, but it's the Spirit. The Holy Ghost gives the utterance. It takes the tongue and it begins to speak. But if you don't want to speak, you can, you, you, people say, I can't help it. The spirit is subject to the prophet. You don't have to say nothing. You say, Lord, I'm, I'm afraid to speak. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to speak in tongues. And then you won't. But when you say, God, whatever way you want to use me, use me. Use me for your glory, but know me. I want you to use me and know me. I want to have that relationship with you. Bless God. So we, we recognize this shows that no matter what kinds of false teaching we hear, we must still know that God, the self-existent one, is faithful to his word. He's not going to change it for you. He's not going to change it with, for me. I don't care if you dress like the Pope. I don't care if you dress like a monk. I don't care. What, listen, it don't make a difference. You, I don't care how good you preach, how big your words may be, how great your dialect when you speak. Praise God. It makes absolutely no difference if you don't know the self-existing God. If you don't have a relationship with the true and living God, you'll be used just like Balaam. And we're going to continue in this story, Lord, say on Sunday. And we're going to see what happens when God gets finished using the person and the person has not yet given in to the Lord. When you know who God is, but you still want to do your own thing, we're going to find out just what happened to the king and the prophet. Glory to the name of Jesus. And, and, and as long as we stay in God's covenant with him, his presence is with us, just like it was with obedient Israel. They were blessed, and we are blessed if we stay in covenant with God. In the Bible, this is the first mention that God, that God says about himself as being a king over a chosen people. We know that now Yahweh is speaking. The Lord is speaking. Yahweh told both Balaam and Balak in a very direct way. You can't curse Israel. Your sorcery will have absolutely no effect because what God has blessed can nobody curse. People say, but that's why I know God blessed my marriage. Hush. It's just hush. We ain't even talking about that. We're talking about you as an individual. Bless God. Has God blessed you? And if God has blessed it, how was it, how was it birthed? Was it birthed in righteousness? Was it birthed in honesty? Was it birthed in, in, in loyalty to God? Or was it all the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life? Praise God. So we have to be very careful because we can contaminate ourselves. What God has blessed, no man can.
curse. Instead of them dis being destroyed or affected by sorcery and divination, Israel was like a lion ready to devour its prey. We see Balaam's greed and corruption is not the best example to follow. Still, he was committed to being faithful and reporting to Balak exactly what God said. Even if it cost him some money, he was going to tell the truth. It had to be something in Balaam that said, I, look, I can lie on them demons and say that the gods have spoken, but this God right here, I ain't fooling up with him. If he put a word in my mouth and gave me a command, I got sense enough to know that if I try to do something else, I'm dead. So let me just go ahead and do exactly what God told me to do. I don't have a relationship with him, but I'm going to be obedient. That that sounds like an oxymoron. I know to some of you to say, well, wait a minute. Mm -mm. Let's go to chapter 24 real quick. Bless the name of Jesus. Chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. Then Balak said, and I laugh at this. And, I, and I, I, it, it wasn't funny to Balak. But as a child of God, if you would sit there and be watching this, you'd be like, dude, for real? And, and it says, then Balak said to Balaam, please come. I will take you to another place. Let's do this again. This is the third time now. Please come and I'll take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor that overlooks the wasteland. Then Balaam said to Balak, Bill, here we go again. Build for me here seven altars. Now there's 21 altars that have already been built. And prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. We're going to do the same thing all over again. And Balak did as Balaam said. And, and, and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. Now them sons of them princes of Moab was right there with him. So now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, watch this. Now when Balaam saw, the prophet saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as at other times to seek to use sorcery. But he set his face toward the wilderness and Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel encamped according to their tribes. And the spirit of God came upon him. But yet he was not chosen by God. God will use anything and anybody to get his point across. Praise God. Balaam had been unsuccessful in cursing Israel. But, but he's going to try one more time. Balaam was so afraid of Israel, he became desperate. Look. We done, we, we, we've done seven, seven, and seven. We done did this 21 times. And, and I'm showing you the little bit of, of Israel. I still want you to curse them anyway. And every time he tries to curse them, they get blessed even more. The, the top of Peor is also known as Baal Peor. This is where the heathens would go and worship Baal. So now he's taking him to the top of a place where they worship a fake God, which was really totally out of order. And God was like, all right. So later on in Numbers, we're going to see what happens when a purified and holy people allow themselves to be contaminated by association. Right now, Israel is in right standing. Right now, they cannot be cursed. But see, Balaam is so desperate, he got another plan. Because if Balaam's plan don't work out, he got something else in mind for them. And if people can't curse you, because you're a child of God, or they're going to try something else to come up against you. But no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. Don't let the don't believe the hype of the devil, his demons. Glory to God. Don't believe them. Child, this is why this happens to you. Because you curse. Mm -hmm. You better go get that curse off you. Mm -hmm. You better find somebody that can pray that thing and sprinkle some holy water and some oil and stuff. Mm -hmm. Child, because if it were me, see, but it ain't you. Ain't got nothing to do with you. This is between God and I. Lord, I'm your child. No way is anybody going to put a curse up against me and it prospers because I'm your child. And if something is going on that should not be, and I'm about to 
fall, then I need to check me and see where my standing is. Am I still in right standing with you? And God, if I'm not in right standing with you, then forgive me for thinking that I am. And so God, now I need you to go beyond what I think and know and go to what you know and let me see what's wrong on the inside of me. But God, if there's nothing wrong and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and I'm in right standing with you, then I'm asking you to rebuke the devil that's trying to curse me and Lord, rebuke those that are being used by the devil to try to curse me and whatever curse they try to put on me, turn that thing around and bless me. But whatever curse they put on me, let it fall on their own heads. And yes, you can pray that prayer. And But you have to pray prayers like that without hatefulness. You, you can't pray it in your heart and you've got iniquity. You won't see people die. That, that's not going to come to pass. But you can do it out of a clean heart. God, I want a clean heart when I ask you this. These that are trying to work roots on me, witchcraft on me, have their little prayer call, cauldrons against me. Lord, whatever they try to do, tear it up. Tear it down. Strip them for who they are. And that, and God will do exactly what you ask. But you, it may not happen at the same day. But you got to know that God is not a man that he should lie. No, the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God said he's going to do, he's going to do it. Bless the name of Jesus. As we, we, as Jesus, as we prepare for Pentecost, we ought to keep in mind. Satan desires to contaminate us. Wanted to make us toxic. So that we can contaminate others for his glory. That's what he wants. He gets no enjoyment watching the glory of God fall on the people of God. Because then we're going to honor God even the more. That upsets him. He wants to keep us messed up. But we have to de detoxify ourselves from toxic, ungodly soul ties and unholy characteristics. We can't expect God to... To give us a Pentecost experience when we do those things. So many people are going to be preaching about Pentecost, like I said, and have no experience with what happened in that upper room. They don't even know how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They, they claim, when I got saved, I got the Holy Ghost. No, you did not. No, you did not. And, and I would that people would stop teaching people that lie because you're telling them they already have the Holy Ghost because they accepted Christ. And, and so they don't seek for the Lord. But the Lord told them to seek. Matthew 7 and 7 says, seek. This is what he told us to do. He says, you ask, you seek, and you knock. And if you use the first three letters of each of those words, it's A-S-K. You still got to ask. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Bless the name of Jesus. And, and, and it's talking about asking. Lord, I'm asking you to fill me with this, your Holy Spirit. I'm seeking your face to get closer to you so that I can be a clean vessel. Lord, I'm knocking on the door. I'm going to keep knocking. And if I get tired with one hand, I'm going to knock with the other. If my both hands get tired, I'm going to start knocking with my feet. Whichever way I got to get an answer, I'm going to get an answer. And Jesus said, everyone that asks, he's going to receive. Everyone that seeks, they're going to find. And everyone that knocks, the door is going to be open. But you have to be right in your heart. This is what it says. Let me end with this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to end with this. Yahweh says in Hosea 9 and 10. Hosea 9 and 10. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified because I just like the way it worked itself out. It says, I found in Israel, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. An unexpected and refreshing delight. I saw your fathers, your ancestors, as the first ripe fruit of the fig tree in its first season. But they became, but they came to Bel Peor, and consecrated themselves to shamefulness, the worship of Baal, and because of their spiritual and physical adultery, they became as detestable or dishonorable to God glorifying demons and satanic kingdom, giving access to them to, to demons uh, for themselves, praise God, and took the glory away from God and gave it to idols. Bless the name of Jesus. And then he said, and they became loathsome or disgusting and foul as the thing they love. They became as low and disgusting as foul as the thing that they love. Be careful what you put your love on. Because you don't want to become that thing that you love and that thing is not of God. This is, this is all it said. They became, they became, not God made them. They became on their own. They did this to themselves. And, and they, 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 they became the thing that they loved the most. Um, whatever 
they say today, whatever you love the most, that's what you become. Knock yourself out. So we will look, sound, and act just like the thing that we love the most. Let's love Jesus so much that we start becoming more and more like him. Bless the name of Jesus. And Sunday we're going to go and see what happens when, when, when a sorcerer has a personal encounter again with the personal God. So you can't play with the Lord. There are a lot of folk playing church. God has brought some of us out of some dark places. Yeah, he has. He's brought us through some things that would have killed somebody else. But the grace of God has allowed us to live and give the testimony of how God has brought us out of some things. Everything ain't got to do with drugs. Mm -mm. Everything don't have to do with sex. But God has brought us out of some things. Some of us have been in, in, in the, a prison of our minds. Our minds have been on lockdown for a long time and we couldn't really function like we wanted to function. We couldn't do what we needed to do for God because our mindset wasn't there the way it should be because of a lot of things that were going on around us. But by the grace of God, we're so grateful that now that we know who he is and we know some of his character, praise the name of Jesus, we can actually come boldly to the throne of grace and say, you know what, God? I love you, but I'm a mess. I don't think like I should all the time. And sometimes my thoughts get tangled up. Sometimes I think wrong and, and I shouldn't think that way about a person. Or sometimes I say things that, and Lord, maybe I shouldn't have said that because that's not what I really think. I just said it because it was there. It was in my heart. It needed to come out. And sometimes we need to go before the Lord and just lay it out before him and cry and say, God, I know I'm a mess. Paul said, the things that I know to do, I don't. And the things I know not to do, that's what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. But, when you say, but God. Sometimes we think we're so perfect in God that we can't make a mistake. I haven't met anybody like that yet. I met some folk that think that. But I haven't met anybody like that yet. We've all come short of his glory. We've all sinned. Whether it was in word, word, whether we did it, whether we listened to it, whether we watched it, whether we imagined it, we've all sinned. We've all sinned. And to leaders, pastors, to teachers, and to those of you that witness to share your testimony. Before you go to share your testimony, before you get ready to share the word, ask God, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart because as far as I know, there's nothing in there, but you see deeper than I do. And if there be any iniquity in my heart, because I don't want my work to be of iniquity. I don't care how many people get saved. I don't want to be lost. So, so Lord, anything in me that you're not pleased with, I don't care what it is. I don't want it there. I don't know how to get rid of it, but I don't want it there. And let God begin to cleanse and purify. And I tell you this, when you get serious with God, God will get serious with you. When you get closer to God, God will draw closer to you. When you get personal with God, God will get personal with you. You got his guarantee that he never leave you. He's right there waiting. He said, listen, he said, I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking. Anybody, anybody, if you open up the door, I'm going to come in. And I'll dwell with you because you're the one who opened the door. See, people get that confused. Oh, if I open the door, he's just going to come into the church. No, that's not what he said. Read the third chapter of Revelation. That ain't what he said. He said, I'm coming in to the one that opens the door. He's a personal God. He wants to be personal with us. Take some time during the Sabbath and spend some time with the Lord and just talk to him. Talk to him. And, and as much as, as we come off of these 10 days of commitment, don't go back into your old ways, to your old attitude, to your old moods. Because I had to catch myself today when the man was getting on my, my nerves because I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. And, it, 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 and when I tell you it flashed in front of me, remember them 10 days. I was like, yes, Lord. 
yes, Lord, because I was really getting annoyed. And, and I think he almost heard it in my voice. But, but I was like, no, I'm good. You know, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. If you need anything else, just give us a call. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. You too. And, and, and I had to say, Lord, forgive me because I, I felt myself getting angry. But he can't help his dialect. And I couldn't help that I couldn't understand. So, so God, I, I ask you to just work it out. And, and when you learn that you're not perfect, no matter what people may think, you're not perfect. And, and, and you do get annoyed. And, and things do hurt your feelings. But I've learned a lot of times when things hurt my feelings, I've learned just to go somewhere, be quiet, and talk to the Lord. And say, God, will you see? That's all I can say is you deal with it. And I'll leave it alone. And whatever the Lord does, he does. And whatever God won't do, guess what? You can't do nothing about it. Remember what Balaam said? He said, I can't reverse what God has already done. You are blessed. Nobody can reverse that but you. You can come outside of the covenant. Don't come outside the covenant. I don't care what kind of day you had, what kind of week you had. Don't come outside of the covenant. Don't let the devil know that he's getting to you. Just keep on giving the Lord the praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for giving the saints their neighborhoods. We thank you for giving us our neighborhood, driving out Satan's children and bringing in your people. Lord God, that we can have a covenant with you in this part of land that 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 we're, we have housing on, Lord God, and we thank you because you did it for, for Israel, and Lord God, and you came and you did it for one person. You did it for Elisha when the folks was aggravating him. Lord God, you sent she-bears after them. We ain't asking you for no she-bears, Lord, but we're asking you to give us our neighborhoods so that we can come together, that we can pray, we can stand outside and give you praise together. Oh my God, what a day, what a, what a wonderful thing. And we ask that you, you rebuke the devil that would try to hinder this from coming to pass. And we thank you for making ways for your people. We thank you for every minister, every preacher, every pastor, every, every evangelist, every part of the fivefold, even the bishops, elders, whatever they are that are teaching and sharing the word. We pray that you get deep on the inside of all of us and shake us up and wake us up so that we don't be lost in delusion, that we don't be lost in error, but that we can stay blessed. And when we stay blessed, can't nothing the devil do. He's frustrated and he'll do everything he can to make us think that we're outside of your covenant. But God, we're staying in your covenant. We're not going to accuse you Lord God, we're not going to make accusations against you wrongfully. We're going to stand on your word and stand on your promises because what you promised, you're going to make it good on this side of glory. And then your other promises after this is all over, we're looking forward to seeing you face to face and having you wipe every tear from our eyes. We give you glory. We give you honor. Give the people of God the best sleep and the best rest, peace of mind. And Lord, rebuke the devil that would give them negative dreams and, and, and nasty dreams and scary dreams. Lord God, we ask that you rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Adonai. You are wonderful. And we give you glory for you are Yahweh. We thank you. You are the I am that I am. And we give you glory in Yeshua's name. God bless all of you that have joined in tonight. Sister Patricia, uh, I thank God for you. She was in our church in Florida. I thank God for her popping in. Uh, Pastor Crawley, amen. I thank God for you joining us tonight. If you're still with us, amen. Praise God. And if somebody slipped by me, amen. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for all of you that have joined in, all of you that um, are praying all you that has tried your best to stay right. The eclipse happened, but there are other things that are coming our way. Amen. Praise God. So we're just going to believe God and trust God and know God even more. God bless and keep you as my prayer always. Those of you know what to do as far as offerings and, and, and 
all the monetary things that you do with the Lord, the Cash App, and, and or you can sell me, whichever way you want to do it. Amen. Praise God. And if you don't want to do nothing, that's all right, too. Bless God. We don't beg. We don't plead. We just say, if you want to. Amen. And we give God the glory for everything. Those of you that have been a blessing to us through prayer and through finances and through gifts, we thank you so much for it because you are an encouragement to us. We're going to keep going anyway, but you really encourage us to continue to go forth when we know that you're getting it or you're asking questions. It's good. If you catch me, if I make a mistake, that's good. Amen. Praise God because it lets me know that you're paying attention and it also lets me know to slow down sometimes because you get excited and you may misquote something. But we thank God for all of you that learning how to love the Lord and learning how to love one another. God bless and keep you always is my prayer. And, and tonight, you know, just thank God for being your shepherd. Amen. Being a real shepherd. And spend some time with him on this Sabbath that he has sanctified just for you. He sanctified the Sabbath just for you so that you can have some quiet time so that he can have some quiet time with you. Bless the name of Jesus. Remember the gentleman of the Yes, yeah. bless the name of Jesus Christ when you see what you say. Glory to God. Yeah, hallelujah. God bless you. Keep you. Have a great night. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Lord, say the same. We'll see you Sunday morning at 8.30. And we're going to continue with the king and the prophet. And we're going to see what happens when you don't give yourself to the Lord. And yet the Lord was using you, but you didn't give yourself to the Lord. And what happens as children of God when you get contaminated by other people? We're going to find all this out. Lord, say the same on Sunday. So have your notepad and have your Bibles ready. God bless and keep you always is my prayer. I love me some Jesus and I love me some all of y'all.